And again, Valby by the numbers, 841.53K, 1452.79, 5K, both championship winning efforts at the indoor championships back second weekend of March at Boston University in uh, December. She went 1456. That was the NCAA record, collegiate record at the time until she broke it at the national championships after she won the D1 cross country race in 1855. And it looks like they're gonna have a team of Pacers for this one. Uh, this is uh, Lydia Oliveri of UA Mission Run Baltimore out front. Uh, I believe typically she's a, a middle distance runner. Uh, Callie Thackeray is in the Nike kit in second. Uh, she's a marathon runner. She's actually recently named to the um, Olympic team for Great Britain. Um, she had an incredible uh, marathon time this past year, uh, running a, a 2.22 um, at the McCurdy Micro Marathon. Um, and then behind them is Valby herself. Uh, and then our third pacer, McKenna Morley, is leading that next pack of runners. So it looks like uh, we're going to have a duo of pacers here uh, to bring Parker home. And, uh, and it was a point I was going to make. I know in some of these races where you have just an incredible athlete or two, you may have uh, a pace setter up front with them and then another one with the chase group. And... Uh, at a big time beat like this, I am certain that if one hasn't been identified for that chase group, that uh, somebody might be stepping up and say, you know what, we're gonna keep this pace going on because we know our leaders are gonna be well out in front of our tempo as uh, Parker Valby. The third runner right now in this procession that will just uh, click lap number two off and put it in the books. Low numbers or big numbers, whichever way you look at it, the opportunity is here. And the talent is on the track. Parker Valby. And they're out so at under a, 75 a sub, seconds. Yep. sub five minute pace. That's right. So our opening section was uh, sub 80s. Now they're sub 75 second quarters. And Valby and uh, her coaches at Florida shook things up with her minimalistic mileage training program and shocked a lot of people when uh, she said how much she puts in every week. And uh, obviously there's more than one way to, uh, to do this. That's true. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting to see the world get you know very excited about cross training all of a sudden you know hey you can break 15 minutes the 5k off of uh the arc trainer uh but you know i think some people are also better at cross training than other than others uh for a lot of athletes it's uh the bane of your existence when you're injured it's it's hard to do it's hard to be as motivated um cross training as you are when running especially for runners because running is what we love to do um, so I think it's a it's a testament to Parker.
Yeah, I'd be, um, you know, really curious to hear, you know, how she's adjusted her training or if she's adjusted that cross training to running ratio um, in preparation for this 10K. Uh, or if, you know, she's kept things the same and just decided to jump in and see how it goes. That's, um, you know, a super interesting feature of her as a runner. You know, I think we're always wondering how do people get to the level that they're at, um, which is why she's such a figure of intrigue, because she doesn't seem to need to run as much as other people to achieve the same or better results. Um, but it all comes from, you know, spending time being injured uh, and realizing, hey, maybe running 60, 70 miles a week or whatever it is, maybe that doesn't work for me. And I, I want to be good at running, so let me find another way. Um, and her former coach at Florida, Chris Zielinski, they figured out this program together that, you know, she's able to perform really well uh, with a lot of hours of cross training. Um, Zielinski now at... University of Oregon and Bowerman Track Club. Um, her current coaches, um, Will and Samantha Palmer, came in. And, you know, you don't want to change things up too much because she's already had so much success. Um, there was actually a big Runner's World piece today that went into a little more detail about exactly how much she does and what her training's like. Um, and it sounds like she does an average of about seven and a half hours of cross training a week. Um, basically just replacing those easy runs with time cross training, um, which honestly makes sense because you can get your heart rate up really high. You can work intervals, um, without all the pounding, you know, you can't run hard every day. That's just going to set yourself up to get injured. Um, so it's a definitely an interesting formula. And it is a fine line that, uh, you have to ride between being as fit as you possibly can and being injured and obviously uh, Chris Zielinski is someone who knows how to run a 10k and also knows about the injuries that can hit you if you go over that red line right uh, and you know the the qual whether it's quality minutes or quality miles uh, Parker Valby obviously does that with her training each and every moment and that gap between one, two, and three, four with McKenna Morley. And then that is uh, Jenna Hutchins from BYU in the number four spot. She is hanging top to McKenna Morley. And then there is almost a half a straightaway. Back to Kenzie Doyle from UMass Lowell. So they're coming from the southeast and the Northeast and occupying some of the top positions in this hot heat of the women's 10,000 meters on day one of the Brian Clay Invitational. This is uh, the debut 10K for Jenna Hutchins as well. BYU sophomore, uh, she recently opened her season with a 15.39 5K at Stanford uh, after getting ninth place at the NCAA Division I Indoor Champs in that 5K. She set her PB of 1530 uh, back in early January in Boston. She actually set her 1500 PR at Brian Clay last year running a 420. So experimenting a little bit with different distances. Uh, you know, maybe if she's able to keep up um, her position right now, I'd say she's probably a 10K runner. And as the next time by will be 4,000 meters for our leader, it is definitely soon to come that Parker Valby will be catching up to the tail end of this fast heat of the women's 10,000 meters. So that is at least the incentive visually for her. Once she is uh, alone running against the clock. And we are pushing almost a half a lap between the top two and the next two. Four thousand meters. For our leaders in 1224. Yeah. 
So right at 31 minutes. Not too shabby, 15.30 for a 5K. And here comes McKenna Morley and Hutchins as our leaders on the back straight. And the gap between the top two and the next two is about 34 seconds. There are our leaders. And uh, on the, the back stretch there, that was uh, Nick Hogger of uh, NAZ Elite, who um, is Callie Thackeray's husband. Looks like he was uh, checking out the splits, you know, making sure that they're staying on pace. I'm sure it's uh, a little nerve wracking to be the one pacing someone to such a big goal. And truly, this has been one runner against the rest of the field. No one else has been in the neighborhood of Parker Valby thus far. This is the marquee race of day one at Brian Clay. And, the uh, young lady who has done so much already for the University of Florida, taking her shot at additional history moments. I also wonder if all the time spent cross-training uh, makes her uniquely attuned for the 10K because she can just space out, you know, <laughs> keep that heart rate in the right zone, click off those splits. Sometimes it's just okay with, you know, being bored and embracing the pain. 12 laps down as the uh, drone tries to keep pace with our leaders there. It goes third and fourth on the split screen. And Parker Valby and our pace setter, it looks like are gonna catch up to the tail end of this field right about the midpoint. Down the back straightaway at 5,000 meters. Valby in 1530 and she is all alone for the last half of this race. Whew. That is a long time. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Callie looked ready to get off the track too. And Valby has started to lap the field and obviously one thing that will factor in to see how close she can run to 10,000 meters if she has to go wide on the turns to make some of these passes. Hopefully the field will at least, if they don't recognize, be notified of the runners storming by, hopefully on the inside as Valby goes out to the edge of lane one to make the pass on this big group. Oh yeah, that's tough. It's a, a little bit of extra track there. Five thousand meters alone in a run for history for Parker Valby. You know, if anyone could do it, I feel like she could do it. <laughs> Once again, she has done so much in her collegiate career. Balby once again headed down start finish. Eleven laps to go for Parker Valby. Even the thought of a runner in, again, a high level of 
race like this potentially lapping the entire field, <laughs> she could get very close. Oh, for sure. I think she might lap some people twice. <laughs> Parker Valby churning down the back straight. There she is. Wearing hip number one. And that has been her spot in the order all race long among the finishers. And you see the big grouping of the field right ahead of Parker Valby as she hits 6,000 meters in 1631. Parker Valby one by one. She has checked the boxes on each lap tonight. And she is just catching up to uh, Kenzie Doyle, who for quite a while was in the number five spot running for UMass Lowell. There and there's her. Jenna Hutchins right there, who's now in second. As she's starting to pass people, uh, you know, she's making sure to get right back next to the rail, trying to conserve, run as little as possible, but it's tough when the field is so big and you have to run by so many people. You're going to run some extra ground. At the same time, you know, maybe, maybe it helps a little bit to have people to run down have people to chase. And actually the next one, if she can pass, she will have lapped the entire field. Hudson's is now in the number two spot since our pace setters have stepped off. Amazing. Just chewing up bunches of the track with each stride. Parker Valby. When she hits start finish. Eight laps remaining. At 20.57. And I know you've mentioned already the debut for Parker at this distance. Also, Jenna Hutchins, not an easy step to go up that far, to go, again, between the 3,000 and the 5,000, okay, but the 5 to the 10, you're doubling that race yeah. distance. <laughs> you're doubling that fatigue, that mental fatigue, that mental keeping in the game. And doing it with ease. And Valby now is about 60 meters behind Hutchins. The only runner in this field that she has not put a lap down. You know, the rest of these runners are, they're going fast too. That's the thing that's crazy. Seven laps remaining, 2,800 meters. Uh, just a picture perfect night. Very little wind, if any at all. Temperatures now probably in the low 60s.
And there is Hutchins coming to the line. Val be right behind her. Winnie Kalati, currently number two in the world with the 30-33. That is the American lead. Right now, and only four women in 2024 have broken 31 minutes. Yeah, the, the 10K standard is incredibly hard uh, for the Olympics. Uh, I believe there's only there's only a handful of women from the United States who you know are even eligible to be selected uh, for the Olympic Games. So you know, definitely something worth worth making a big swing at, like Parker is. Um, every year it gets harder and harder to make these teams. When Parker Valby hits the start finish line, it will be five laps remaining. A big number behind her 20, but still 2,000 meters to go. A lot can happen in 2,000 yes. meters. And here she goes, making the pass. She has lapped the entire field. Parker Valby running toward history. Five laps to go. The crowd joining in their appreciation. 24-41 for Parker Valby with five to go. Just an incredible display of running excellence. Parker Valby in a very high quality field as JoJo just mentioned. JoJo's on her way down to the finish line. And the one many of the people here this evening have stayed around to see perform has taken it to that next level. Parker Valby. She has been alone since the 5,000 meter mark, 25.56 with four laps remaining. So the number 12 time in U.S. history, 30.55 by Kara Goucher. Only a dozen American women have ever broken 31 minutes. Will Parker Valby add her name to that list? Using the other runners in the field as her motivation. Visual goals, she is checking them off one at a time, putting other runners two laps behind. Two laps behind her run for history. Parker Valby. On pace to break. The collegiate national record on pace to join the greatest American women ever at 10,000 meters.
Parker Valby entering the start finish straight away once again. With two laps remaining. 800 to go, the run for history in U.S. distance running. Her first ever attempt at 10,000 meters. 25 laps on the track. In the final 5,000 tonight, Parker Valby was all alone against the clock. Valby, just four more left-hand turns between her and history. The star from Florida, 29-39 with one to go. The current collegiate record, 31-18-07, Lisa Cole running for Iowa State back in 2010 at the Stanford Invitational. Valby from above, cranking it out down the back straightaway. Final 250 meters. Parker Valby in top gear. Once again, just 12 American women have ever run under 31 minutes. That elite group is going to grow tonight in a new collegiate record. Belongs to Parker Valby of Florida at this year's Brian Clay Invitational. Her time, 30-50. Point four three, as she moves to number 11 all time amongst American women in the 10,000 meters. An amazing run by Parker Valby from Florida. She hit all the boxes, she checked everything off. There she is, her first ever attempt at 10,000 meters. 25 laps, the final 12 and a half. When the pace setters stepped off the track. And again, having lapped the entire field. We'll see who is going to get number two. And at least that honor, it looks like, is going to go to uh, Jenna Hutchins was in the number two spot. As Valby's 30, 50, 43. That is Jenna Hutchins from BYU. The sophomore in her debut at this distance. She is going to get number two with a hard charging Florence Ua Geniza from West Texas A&M will get third. So Hutchins at 32-52-01. Ua Geniza at 32-52-54. A great debut by Jenna Hutchins, but 
only overshadowed by an off the charts run to history by Parker Valby, 30-50.43. Once again, number 11 all time, 